looks that way. Hi there, thanks for rejoining from the waiting room. We have Sandy McIver and we're going to do um, exactly the same as we did for Alex Greenwood. So I'll start with broadcast and then um, because time is quite tight with each of these calls, I will then move to the embargoed section, embargoed for tomorrow um, for, for written media with Sandy. So could I go straight to Joe Curry for BBC Sport, please? Hi Sandy, good to see you. Hi Joe. What's it like to be back amongst the, uh, the England girls? It's great. Um, I think for a new coach to come in and, and for myself to be selected, um, again, it's a huge honour any time you go away with the, with the national team. And um, yeah, I'm really excited to be joining up with everyone. Of the three goalkeepers selected this time, I think it, it's fair to say you're all relatively inexperienced when it comes to international caps. I think you've got five amongst you um, but what kind of confidence does it instill in you that, that you were picked as one of those three? Um, yeah I think the the group of keepers that we've got going to camp just shows how how strong the group is especially for, for how young we are. Um, I think I'm the oldest at 22 which is probably a bit, uh, a bit ironic but um, yeah I think the competition amongst Ellie, Hannah and myself is really strong so I think it's going to be a really good camp to be a part of. Usually there would be a, someone sort of described as a senior goalkeeper, a Carly Telford amongst you, who I'm sure would normally have an arm around you and be sort of guiding you through an England camp. What's the relationship like with, with Ellie and with Hannah and how's it working between you, bearing in mind that none of you have been uh, and sort of, you know, competed at a major tournament before? Yeah, it's a really good group. I've worked with Ellie for a number of years in the, in the youth age groups and I'm just starting to work with Hannah now. And I think the fact that we all get on so well off the pitch really helps the training sessions and how we work on the pitch. Um, it just works really well together. Um, and I think, I think we're lucky in the fact that we do get on so well, so there's no animosity or anything on the pitch. And yeah, it's just a, it's a really exciting group to be a part of. What's I guess said to you about the potential of the number one shirt being up for grabs? Um, I've not spoke to her personally, but um, you know, I think the fact that the number one shirt is up for grabs, it's just extra motivation in itself. Um, but having said that, there's the three good goalkeepers in this camp and so it's not going to be a given to anyone. The fact that as a, a, a national team, um, England haven't really played for a year, what's the feeling like in camp that there's finally a game that's just a week away now? I think just real excitement. Um, unfortunately, we had games postponed and cancelled at the end of end of last year um, but the number of in-house games we have have been so competitive um, and I think to be able to come off those last few camps going into a match camp I think the excitement from everyone is is at a real high. What kind of a, a potential of a game does Northern Ireland bring to you? I think it'll be a really exciting game. Um, I was speaking to Simone back at Everton and you can really tell that that squad is is full of spirit um, for themselves to get to a European playoffs is, is for them really exciting and so I think coming into the game on Tuesday it's going to be a really a really tough and challenging game for both teams. Thanks Sandy, enjoy the game. Thank you. Thank you very much Joe. Could I go next to Anton for Sky Sports News please? Thanks Sandy. Hi Sandy, nice to see you. Um, you've obviously taken a slightly different route to get to where you are now. Obviously, you came through the fantastic system at, at Clemson. Um, just tell us a little bit how that's kind of moulded your experience and how it's different to everybody else in camp. Um, I think going away to America for me was a life-changing experience. I think it helped me mature, not only as a goalkeeper, but as a person um, being away so far from home for the first time. Um, and I, I know in the past, the view on America has been um, different from, from the young players playing in the WSL now. Um, but for me, I was fortunate in the league that I was in that it was so competitive. Um, some of the girls that have come back who I was playing against, Alessia Russo, a lot of other Moy, um, and they're, they're both at, at top teams now. So I think the fact that I was able to play in such a um, high quality league and also uh, grow as a person was, was something that I'm really grateful for. And it's, it's an opportunity that I would, um, I'll never regret taking. 
and Clemson, well, the college system is, it mm. creates superstars, Clemson especially, you know, Deshaun Watson and Trevor Lawrence now and that kind of thing. There's a lot of spotlight on what you do at a very young age, isn't there? Has that helped as well? Um, yeah, I think so. Um, I think at Clemson as well, the athletic community was so uh, so tight knit. Um, you know, I've, I've got friends who who play in the NFL, who are on the PJ tour, and I think when you have that support from from players who are are in an even bigger spotlight than you are, I think that definitely helps you grow and learn. Just just casually drop in. You got friends in the NFL and the PGA tour, as, as you do. That's fine, yeah, completely normal. Um, look, obviously the last sort of 12 months, huge conversation around racial equality. How has your time in the States shaped your view and your experiences and what you've able to give back over here? Yeah, I mean, that was something I was conscious of when I went over to America, um, especially in being in the state of South Carolina. Um, but for me, I mean, all the experiences I had out there were, were positive. Um, especially in Clemson, it's, it's very much a college town. So you're kind of in a, a protective bubble. Um, but I think being able to live in America, you become so much more aware of, of how other athletes of different um, ethnicities, how they feel and what it's like for them. And um, it, was a, it was a really great opportunity for me because that's not something I've really been exposed to. Um, and it was a really... It, it was really educational um, just to, to hear other people tell their story and um, things that they've gone through. And I suppose that helps when you came over here, especially when it was being discussed in changing rooms, you know, especially during last summer and, and the start of the season. Yeah, um, you know, I think it's unfortunately it's such a big talking point in football at the minute um, and, and hopefully the game it continues to to progress in a positive light for everybody how right let's, let's get back to football how desperate are you to make your debut over the next few days um it would be great i mean i think playing for your country at senior level is, is the pinnacle of football um but that for me is something that's out of my control um and so the priority for me heading into camp is just to is just to train well really And finally, for me, um, you were, let's say, known very well by, by football fans, but the FA Cup final was obviously, must have been a huge day in your career, but to play so well, your stock, your, you know, your, your fame kind of must have increased from that moment, I suppose. Yeah, I think um, from the team's perspective, playing at the FA Cup was, was huge for us. Um, and, you know, as a goalkeeper... I'm a big believer in sometimes you just need a bit of luck. Um, and I don't know how many times the post and the crossbar saved me in that game, but um, it was a real big game to be a part of. Unfortunately, we couldn't, we couldn't quite get to the end, but um, it's definitely a game that, that I won't forget. Thanks, Sadie. Have a great week. Thank you. Thank you, Anton.